one of the uh, most important webinar, international webinar tonight. We have three guest speakers tonight, and the chair of this session are uh, Baruch Hassan Manna and uh, Dr. Adil Ibrahim. Uh, all of you, Baruch Hassan, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraqa musaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I think, but uh, I'm sure that uh, all the attendees as a panelist, uh, they agree with me that uh, science uh, everywhere, and you can get science from uh, books, from uh, any materials, but uh, uh, experience is not everywhere. Experience is very seldom and very rare and very crucial. And one of the target of our uh, mega online course is to uh, get experience and uh, and to uh, bring experience for everybody all over uh, uh, the world. And uh, uh, it proves this uh, webinar, it is one of the best webinars in the field of anesthesia, intensive care and uh, pain management. And uh, now uh, we are followed uh, by everybody all over the world, from the Far East, from Middle East, from uh, Latin America, from Europe, uh, from uh, USA. And uh, uh, today uh, we have uh, very distinguished and eminent speakers. And as usual, and uh, uh, Professor uh, Samir Al Ansari is a star and the icon of our mega online course. He will introduce uh, his series about the nutrition uh, in the uh, intensive care. Uh, and the uh, second speaker will be uh, Dr. Uh, Hazim Yassin from uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, the last speaker will be Professor Barbara Rogers from Ohio, USA. Uh, and uh, this proves what uh, just I said, uh, that we are bringing all the experience, most of the experience. Now we have experience from the Egypt, from uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and from America. And we provide all of this experience and science uh, to the uh, attendees uh, on uh, a golden uh, plate. Uh, so uh, I appreciate the presence of uh, our uh, uh, distinguished uh, speakers, and we will speak uh, today, as we said, about intensive care and uh, anesthesia. And it is a great honor for me. Uh, he will share with me uh, in introducing the speakers, Professor Adel Ibrahim. Uh, and uh, um, uh, let us start with our eminent and distinguished uh, speaker, Professor uh, Samir Al Ansari, uh, with his series about the nutrition in the ICU. So please, Professor Samir Al Ansari, go ahead, and the floor is yours, sir. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you, Dr. Hassan, for this nice uh, introduction and uh, nice words. Uh, good evening, my dear colleagues. Good evening, my uh, our uh, attendees. Uh, today, I am. Uh, we are going to in continuation for uh, for uh, <clears throat> for our series of uh, nutritional support in the ICU. Uh, we will continue today with and start with TPN calculations. Uh, continue my uh, series of nutrition support. I will speak today about total parental nutrition and I will concentrate today on the formula calculation. How to calculate the formula for nutritional support or for TPN. As we know at first at start, you have to evaluate your patient. You have to assess your patient as we said before, you have to know the lab results uh, first, how much you will need from uh, carbohydrates, how much you need from proteins, uh, from lipids. Suppose the patient suffering from high triglycerides, you have to go down with lipid support. You have to assess your patient. After that, you will decide if you will start with 
total parental nutritional support or with partial nutritional support. Uh, as you know, as uh, most of you know, there are two types of parental nutrition. Referral nutritional support through peripheral vein, if the central vein is difficult for you, and the total and the total parental nutritional support. In peripheral support, we give some uh, internal nutrition and just supplementation with additional uh, parental, parental nutrition through peripheral vein. But we have to uh, decrease the osmolarity of the infusion uh, calories. We have at least 100, 900. If the osmolarity is high, you, you, you can't infuse through a peripheral vein. And so the peripheral parental nutrition is a temporary support or a temporary bridge till you achieve a full enteral nutritional support. Uh, roots of uh, administrations, and so uh, if we uh, uh, speak about peripheral parental nutrition, it is a short term use only, not for a long time, just a temporary support, as I said, and the osmolarity is low. The root solutions, low osmolarity, formula uh, osmolarity is less than 900 or 600. Fluid restriction is not necessary. Because in peripheral nutrition support, you have to give a large volume of solutions to decrease the osmolarity of the nutritional uh, form. For uh, TPN, we, of course, select a central axis. Central axis may be through the subclavian vein, internal jugular vein, or femoral vein, or through peripheral central cannulations or peak line through the cubital uh, veins. Uh, total parental nutrition must be individualized for the patient. There are standard concentrations of protein, carbohydrate, and the fats available. Standard volume, you, you, uh, as we have before, the 10% glucose, 50% glucose, uh, 70%, uh, also leverage 20%, 10%. Uh, protein amino acid concentrations, 10%, 15%. These are standard concentrations av available in most of the hospitals in which there is no lab for nutritional support preparation. Most of the world have a lab, nutritional lab for preparing the formula or for modulating the formula according to the patient needs. And I think it vary from patient to patient. And so we have to prescribe the ingredient which are suitable for every patient. And of course, it differs from patient to patient. But in the markets, there are solutions ready or formula ready, which contains the three macronutrients together, carbohydrates, protein, and fats together in one bag. And the others contains two, uh, two uh, ingredients, carbohydrates and protein, and the fats, uh, could be a separated, uh, infused and a separate solutions. Uh, and so the standard concentration, which we used before, is limiting the degree of individualization using these standard solutions. And so better to have a nutritional lab in your hospital to formulate according to patients in it how much carbohydrate, how much proteins, how much lipids. However, mixing different formula in calculated amount can be used to develop the feeding solutions for most patients. And as we see here is a picture of three, three in one solutions uh, as uh, KBVN, and I think most of the hospitals are using it. It contains protein, carbohydrates, and fat together, and you can mixing the bread in between that and infusing through a central line. These are examples of already prepared solutions or infusion for TPM. We have to ask ourselves, what is the patient energy? How much calories this patient required? And I think we discussed this one in the previous lectures. We have three methods, as we know. The, uh, the most accurate one, which depend on indirect calorimetry, which depend on carbon dioxide production, how much, and the oxygen consumption, how much. And you can get these two items from the ventilator. And so used for patient on ventilator. And this yeah, mostly is the most accurate one for calculation, the calories which we uh, enumerates last time or last lecture. 
and the standard one or the routine used one, which is the roughly one or standard one, about 25 to 30, 35 kilocalories per kg per day for the patient. And we can increase if the patient in passing or staying in a severe catabolic state. After that, you have, after calculating the calorie requirement of your patient, you have to calculate also the fluid needs per day, how much fluid, and are, there are several methods, as we said, first 10 kilo, about 100 cc per kg, second uh, 10 kilogram, 50 cc per kg, and the over that 20 cc if the patient age less than 50 years. Uh, also, don't forget, in addition to the micronutrient, which you add to TPN, which is dextrose, amino acid, and the, the, and the lipids, the electrolytes, sodium, chloride, magnesium, potassium, phosphate, and the calcium. And this is very important, in addition to trace elements. And I think today I will not speak about trace elements. I am going to speak about trace elements in a separate lectures, um, uh, mostly next week. Uh, this is an example of two in one solutions. They can use dextrose, micronutrient dextrose, and the amino acid here, in addition to other bag containing, uh, containing the lipids. And you have to decide how much vitamins you need, how much minerals you, you can use, and according to patient situation. Uh, how to write uh, TPN? Uh, there are several steps, and we must we must be oriented with that. Identify the energy needs, as I said, calorie. How much calories you need, and then the first step: distribute this energy. Suppose you have two thousand calories, and you have to distribute to the three macro neutron, carbohydrate, protein, lipids, and so on according to percentage which you select. We mostly we use 60 to 65 for carbohydrates, 30% for lipids, and the, the remaining four proteins. And suppose that your patient is in severe catabolic state, you have to add proteins and decrease the other ingredients. And so these are formulated or modulated formula according to patient needs. After you calculate the energy, and after distributing it, you have to convert the energy to grams. You have to change the energy to grams. And after that, convert the gram to solutions. And so the first step, calculation the calorie. After that, distribute the calorie to the three macronutrients you have. And then it changes the calories to grams and it changes the gram to solutions or volume. Three steps you can, you can write through it, you can write your formula. Macronutrient distributions, simply uh, we use this uh, formula. Protein, uh, protein 10 to 35%, according to suppose patient with extensive burn, you have to increase your percentage of protein, multiple trauma or extensive trauma and so on, catabolic state or the early state after trauma, or even in the anabolic state, which is the third state, which I said about that or speak about that in the last lecture. Fat from 20 to 35%, carbohydrate from 45 to 65%. Uh, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, and then add your electrolyte requirement, vitamins, trace element, and the minerals and the medications. And as we know, most of you know, trace element estimation, mostly we, we use uh, roughly estimations, not depending on the lab estimations. But you can suspect it from certain equations and from certain enzyme estimations and some, and some functional assay. <clears throat> and I will speak about it in detail next. Uh, energy kilocalorie distributions are how? Suppose these are examples of how to formulate your uh, calories or how to write your uh, formula of TPN. Suppose your patients uh, needing 2,000 calories per day. Substrate distributions, protein, I will give 20%, for example. So, and so I will give him 400 calories. Carbohydrate, 50%, I will give 1,000 calories. Fats, 30%, I will give him 600 kilocalories. Then I change this calorie requirement into grams. Protein, I will divide 400 kilocalories. Protein by four will give me 100 grams. Divided by 3.4 will give me 
294 grams of carbohydrate or 300 gram of uh, carbohydrate. Every gram of carbohydrate in TPN give me <coughs> 3.4 calories. Fat I will divide by 10 will give me 60 gram of uh, fats or lipids. And after that, I change this gram to volume, to solutions, protein. Suppose proteins, you will need uh, 100 gram. It will be available in 1,000 ml of 10% amino acid. Every 100 ml of amino acid, 10% contain 10 gram. And so the 1,000 contain 100 gram. Carbohydrate also, suppose you, you have solutions of 50% uh, per, say 50 dextrose. This meaning one liter of you 50% containing 500 gram of dextrose. And so you will use 300 gram. Uh, fats of oh, every one liter of 20% of course will contain 200 gram of fats. And so the 50 gram will be available in 250 ml. This in case of you have a fixed or standard concentrations of TPN solutions in your hospital. But suppose you don't have these solutions or on the other hand, you have a nutritional lab on your pharmacy. They, you just write, I need how much calorie from every macronutrient and send it to the lab. Or you can summarize it or change it to percentage, I need. How much percentage from lipids? Uh, how much I need, for example, 2,000 cc of TBN containing 40% uh, uh, protein, containing 50% uh, carbohydrate, and we, we modulate it according to our patients. And I will give example for this. Calculating the osmolarity of parental nutrition solutions to be sure it is not high. And I want to say something. Not, this is not meaning you infuse through a central vein, there is no complications. Thrombotic complications encountered and we see it even with 5% glucose for long period of time through the peripheral vein. Also the central vein, sub internal jugular, and you must be oriented all the time and suspect these complications. If you use high percentage of carbohydrates, 70%, 50% for a long time, suspect you will see some complications as thrombophlebitis in this vein. And we see many patients with thrombotic complications in subclavian, then the swelling and redness and inflammation in the upper half and the obstruction and so on. And so you must be aware of this complication, but you have to calculate the osmolarity of parental nutrition before using. And this is a simple equation for calculating the osmolarity. How many grams of dextrose multiply by five? How many grams of protein multiply by 10 and multiply the lipids by 1.5? Five for carbohydrate for dextrose, 10 for protein, and 1.5 for lipid. This and the, sum, the summation of this number give you the osmolarity of your solution. Dextrose five and the protein 10 and lipids 1.5. This is an example of Automax, and there is Automax for lab for nutritional uh, nutritional lab in the pharmacy inside the hospitals and prepared from a large volume of concentrated solutions according to order you sent or according to the nutritional sheet you sent to the pharmacy. Ma uh, macronutrient concentration percentage. Uh, which is grams of solute per 100 ml of, uh, of fluid. I give you some example how to calculate. Uh, suppose you have dex, uh, dextrose 70%. This meaning every 1,000, every 100 contain seven gra 70 grams, every 100 ml, and the one liter will contain 700 grams. If you times it by 3.4, give you the total calories and the one liter of the seven. 10% amino acid solutions contain 10 grams per, per 100 ml and, uh, and, uh, and 100 grams every uh, 1,000. 20% uh, levels contains 200 grams every one liter. Uh, sample for dextrose calculation, uh, 1,000 ml of D50 will contain uh, 500 grams of dextrose. 100 kilocalories by multiplying uh, 
500 gram dextrose by 3.4 kilocalorie per kg. Uh, TPN, carbohydrate, every gram give me 3.5 kilocalorie per kg. For lipid calculations, uh, lipids, if 10% solution, every CC will give you 1.1 kilocalorie. In 20% in solution, and I think this is the most one used and we prefer it for containing essential amino acids, we, every CC containing two calorie per mer and 20% left. Calculation of dextrose amino acid with BG back limits. In this method, we use uh, mixtures of uh, carbohydrate and protein, and in addition, another bag containing the uh, lipid emulsions or lipid solutions to be infused. Uh, examples for calculations. I, I, I will give example here for calculations of 2N1. Two micronutrients, the carbohydrate and protein, in one bag, and the lipid in a separate bag. Suppose I, I, my patient need one thousand eight hundred calories and the protein eighty eight gram and the fluid two thousand cc. I will give first. I will subtract first the fat content to be bought in a separate bag because I will use two bags one bag containing carbohydrate and protein, and the other bag, second bag, will contain lipid. And so I calculate the lipid, 1,800 kilocalorie times, I suppose I want to give 30% of calorie and, and, and uh, as fat. I will get 540 kilocalorie as lipid. We can use it for, uh, we can use 10% solution or 20% solution. If I use 10% uh, solutions, I will divide 540 kilocalorie by 1.1 every cc containing 1.1 kilocalorie. And so will give me 491 cc for 24 hours. The <laughs> divided it by 24 hours, it will give me 20 cc per hour infusion of 10% level. And so I calculate Z, how much calories I need from limits and separated it from the total solutions, extracted it from the total solutions, and devoted it in a separate bag and infused it over 24 hours or over 12 hours according to time. We prefer always the levels to be infused over long period of time to avoid the rapid increase in triglycerides and levels and so on in the blood. Mostly we infuse over 12 hours. If you infuse over 12 hours, you will divide by 12 hours. It will give you about 40 cc per hour of 10%. After that, this is the volume of lipid in the second bag. I extract it from the total fluid the patient will receive, the 2000 cc minus 491 for lipids. The remaining fluid, 1509 will be in the first bag, which will be distributed to both carbohydrate and protein. Protein calculation, after that, suppose the patients need uh, 88 gram of uh, protein. I will do, I, uh, according to body weight, uh, protein calculation, suppose I selected 88 gram protein for these patients. I divide uh, by the total volume for the first bag, which 1,000. 509 and the multiply by 100, I will get the percentage of protein or amino acid solution. Uh, after that, I uh, calculate how much calorie from protein I give. I give 88 uh, gram protein times four calorie for every gram, I will get 352 kilocalories. And so I have to extract from the total calories which the patient need, patient need 1,800 minus 540 for lipids and 352 for uh, protein. The remaining will be 908 kilocalories, these four carbohydrates. And so, as we see, we change the, the, we calculate the calories first for fats and extract it from the total calories and is in distribute the total calories, the remaining calories to protein and carbohydrate. Uh, 
for the remaining calorie for carbohydrate, 908 calorie divided by 3.4 kilocalorie per kg will give me how much gram dextrose will be given to this, uh, to this patient. 270, uh, 267 gram dextrose divided by the remaining volume, 1,509 multiplied by 100, will give me the percentage of dextrose solution which I have to order for this patient. And so the, uh, I ordered 17% dextrose for this patient. Rate of amino acid dextrose infusion divided the total volume of this protein and carbohydrate by 24 hours will give me 63 cc per hour. Uh, suppose I want to uh, give the three macronutrients in one bag. It is very simple, like more simple than the previous one. Suppose I need 1,000 total calories, 1,800, protein 88 grams, and the flow 2,000 cc. I have to calculate lipid or extract, uh, calculate lipid first. 30% lipid will equal 540. 540, if I give 10% solutions, will divide, uh, sorry, will divide it by 10 kilocalories to, uh, to gain how much gram of uh, fats I will give and is then divided by the volume of solution and multiplied by 100, giving me the percentage of limits which I have to order in my sheet, 2.7%. It is a mathematical method to calculate how much percentage for every macronutrient you have to give to the lab to prepare you in the nutrition lab. Uh, protein 88 gram divided by the total solution or total flow 2000 and uh, multiplied by 100 will give you 4.4% of amino acid. Uh, timing by four to get how much calorie of protein equals 352. After that, the extras will be the remaining one will be 900, 900 divided by 3.4 kilocalorie per gram give you how much gram the extras you will get and you, the percentage will be 13.4% of the extrusions. And so, as we see, there are many methods of ordering the uh, calorie requirements for TPN to your patient. If you have standard solutions, as we said, you have to calculate the calorie and you change this calorie to gram and then change the gram requirement to volume in your standard solution. If you have lab in your uh, hospital, you have to calculate the percentage for every macronutrient you will going to, or you are going to infuse your patient. And so, suppose I have 100 gram protein, how much it represents to the total volume, how much percentage, and I send to the, I need percentage, 20% carbohydrates, uh, 40, 10% uh, and so on. Infusion rate, the rate of amino acid uh, dextrose lipid infusion, a total volume by 24 hours will be 83 cc per hour. Additional sterile water to standard uh, to, uh, total uh, parental nutrition. We have, suppose your formula calculated in 1,800 uh, uh, 1, and the fluid requirement for your patient is 2,400 or 2,500, you have to give the difference as uh, water or fresh, uh, fresh water or as IV uh, normal saline. Uh, fluid needs, suppose the fluid needs uh, 2,450, exceeding the nutritional formula, you have to give the difference as dry water or as needed. This is an example of nutritional standard uh, sheet for nutrition support, which you order or which you send to the pharmacy for preparing the, your uh, solutions. Uh, you have to be sure from the name of the patient and administration and route of administration. In either internal nutrition or TPN, you have to write this sheet. You have to write all the electrolytes which you need. Also, dextrose how much amino acids, how much lipid, how much. Even yeah, you write in grams or you write in uh, percentage, as we uh, explained now. Uh, uh, also, you have to add the vitamins and the trace element. And if you need insulin, if the patient is uh, 
diabetic, trace element you have to write. Suppose you want to add some drugs as H2 antagonist or proton blockers you can add here. And you have to, read, to write Z rate, how much ml per hour, and the Z volume, uh, total volume, how much, and the, which method you will give continuous infusion or the cyclic infusion. You have to mention this in your uh, sheet. Of course, when you write nutritional sheet, you have to, write to, to, to monitor your patient as a feedback uh, monitoring for any complications could be happen from TPN uh, nutritional support. Initiation of TPN always starts slowly and also stops slowly is a rule. To avoid, start slowly to avoid the refeeding syndrome, which will occur mostly in, mostly in cachectic patients or malnourished patient, severely malnourished patient, if you push nutrition support, even with internal nutrition, if you push the nutritional support very fast, you will get refeeding syndrome complications, which is manifested by hypokalemia, severe hypokalemia, and hypophosphatemia, which is supposed to severe arrhythmia up, up to arrest. Uh, <coughs> Uh, if, if central access is not available, peripheral parental nutrition should be considered as I said as the beginning. As protein associated with few metabolic side effects, maximum amount of protein can be given on the first day, up to 60, 70 grams of protein per liter. You can give them protein, no, no problem. Uh, you can give rapidly or the maximum amount can be given in the first day. Maximum carbohydrate given the first day is 150, 200 gram per day, or 15 to 20 percent final dextrose concentration. Don't use high concentration in first, second day. Always we uh, proceed over gradually up uh, over two, three days, four days to avoid refeeding syndrome and other complications. Dextrose content of parental nutrition can be increased if capillary blood glucose level are consistent with than 180 milligram per cent. Intravenous fat emulsions in parental nutrition in general can be increased if triglycerides are less than 400 milligram per cent. And we have to follow really the triglycerides in the first week, uh, even daily or twice per week to be sure the patient is not uh, suffering from hyper triglyceride. Fluid needs, <coughs> sorry. Uh, fluid needs, as I told, if we as a patient need more fluid than the parenteral formula fluid content, you have to add the difference to compensate for this. Transition to enteral feeding in pediatric and in, 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 in adult also in general. Try to uh, uh, tape it more slowly. Don't stop the TPN suddenly. Otherwise, you, your patient will suffering from hypo rebound hypoglycemia. And especially, specifically in infants or pediatric, we have to be to avoid this uh, complication. Generally, parental nutrition is continued till 70 to 80 percent of energy needs are met enteral. When you shift from total uh, or enteral from uh, TPN to enteral nutrition, you have to be gradually withdrawing the TPN solutions, uh, not all of a sudden, and to be sure your patient is taking adequate enteral nutrition, about 70 to 80 uh, percent. Rebound hypoglycemia if you stop it, and sometimes we stop it and add 10 percent dextrose to be sure the patient will not suffer from rebound hypoglycemia. Uh, if adults receiving oral or enteral nutrition sufficient to maintain, uh, to maintain blood glucose, no need to take a TP. Medications uh, could be used with uh, TPN. Yes, some medications could be added, like insulin, like selenium, zinc chloride, rantidine, heparin, octreotide. Some drugs, metoclopramide, could be added to the uh, TPN, but avoid injection it, uh, only through the root of injection or uh, through the root of supplementation of the drugs, not the line, uh, not the one, the pathway of the nutrition because the infection rate is very high risk. And so we always try to keep the IV infusion as a separate line for uh, TPM solutions, not manipulated. Uh, infusion uh, schedules uh, may be continuous uh, parental nutrition. We give over 24 hours to avoid the nursing interruption and avoid 
and uh, the patient will be tolerated more adequately and the uh, nursing time will be spared. And even touch contamination is less if you give as a continuous parenteral depression. But sometimes, but of course it has its disadvantages. It may lead to uh, patient uh, persistent anabolic state and increase the level of storage by liver and reduce mobility in ambulatory patients and the change of altered insulin to glycagon ratio. And so mostly we prefer cyclic PM, usually over a period of 12 to 18 hours. Uh, it's advanced approximate, no, uh, normal physiology of intermittent feeding. The patient uh, has there is intermittent feeding, uh, ideal for ambulatory patients and allow normal activity and the improved quality of life. Uh, cyclic BN <coughs> advantages uh, maintain the nitrogen balance, more positive balance actually, and more visceral proteins and more better than tumors. Cyclic, uh, these advantages not tolerated by critically ill patients require more nursing manipulation, increased potential for touch contamination, increased nursing time. Uh, monitoring for every nutrition support, suppose even uh, enteral nutrition or parental nutrition, so you have to monitor your patients uh, uh, routinely, uh, wait uh, at least three times a week and at the beginning of uh, admission to ICU. Also signs and symptoms of edema daily, you have to estimate and write it in the nutrition sheet. Signs and symptoms of dehydration through central lines, through IVC, through partial variability, many methods for estimation of the volume state. Also fluid intake output daily, very important, and adequacy of intake at least two times per week and the nitrogen balance, nitrogen intake, nitrogen output difference is very important for estimating your patient. And they always suspect if your patient accepting positive nitrogen balance through these estimations, these are prognostically very important and they give you uh, good uh, prognostic signs that patients will be more better and more uh, survive. Uh, protein markers, uh, which we depend on at serum, a serum albumin, it is really mo uh, mostly a prognostic uh, marker because of long half uh, time, maybe 21 days or more. Uh, in mild mind iterations, it will be from 3, 3.5, uh, dropped to 2.5 to 3 in moderate malnutrition. Severe malnutrition is less than 2.5, and actually it is a prognostic marker rather than uh, for follow-up of nutritional uh, support. Uh, other protein markers which we uh, which uh, has a, a short half-life as pre-albumin, two, three days of life, preferred for monitoring, transferrin also eight, nine days, retinol binding protein, and uh, somatomidine about uh, 12 hours, eight hours, and so this is better for uh, as protein markers for uh, monitoring. Nitrogen balance is very simple, really. You can calculate the nitrogen intake minus the nitrogen output. And as you know, nitrogen, uh, gram nitrogen equals 6.5 gram of protein. And so you calculate how much protein this patient take all over the 24 hours and how much urine output is excreted, is excreted and uh, calculate the nitrogen balance difference will give you if your patient is on nitrogen positive or negative nitrogen balance. Uh, serum electrolyte, blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, uh, two, three times per week. Serum glucose, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, weekly or as ordered. For, uh, phosphorus are really very important, especially at start or restart of feeding to avoid refeeding syndrome because it's very dangerous to drop. And even if you find your phosphorus level, serum phosphorus is low, you have to more be gradual with initiating your feeding and maybe and may waiting for feeding support till you correct phosphate level. Serum triglycerides based diet, serum triglycerides and which is after and to take care of other solutions which you infuse as sedative as propofol. You have to calculate its volume and add it to the TPM uh, formula. You have you consider it to consider it in your caloric requirement for your. Uh, also, the uh, respiratory quotient is very important to follow it if you have indirect calorimetry in patient. And our target, as I said before, uh, the optimum uh, range from 0.8 to 0.9. If it is more one, 
uh, either you, you overfeed your patient and you have to decrease your total calorie or you decrease uh, the carbohydrate uh, content. If your patient accepting a respiratory question 0 0.7 to 0.8, this meaning fat and protein oxidations uh, depending uh, more than carbohydrates. Uh, and I think, and uh, of course, I have to uh, to say something about the complications of TPM. You can suspect many, many complications from starting of inserting your central line, the mechanical problems, pneumothorax, hydro bleeding, infection, and so on, hyperosmolarity and uh, electrolyte disturbance, hypo, hypo, hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, all. Uh, all complications you can suspect and you have to avoid, and especially if carbohydrate excess and uh, uh, <coughs> cholestasis, and uh, this lead to problems in the liver. And so also we have to uh, to see and follow up the liver profile. If you find your uh, liver function test is increasing, this meaning you have. Uh, to go down with carbohydrate, especially after the first week, second week, you may face a problem of cholestasis and this is inside the liver. And so you have to go down with carbohydrate. Uh, next week, inshallah, I will concentrate on trace. Element. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Thank you, uh, Prof. Ansari, for this uh, very informative uh, lecture. Uh, I think, as I said uh, before, uh, science everywhere in the books, but you will not find this experience except in our uh, webinar in the Mega Online course and from expert, expert person like Professor Ansari. And I think this, uh, this uh, uh, type of uh, calculation of the nutrition or the nutrition as an item as itself in the ICU, it needs to be uh, considered as one of the subspeciality itself because it needs a lot of experience. It, it needs patients from the doctors also who are monitoring. The patient should be monitored and the patient is chronic present in the ICU. It needs a lot of uh, investigations and it is not like uh, something simple, it is an uh, art and a big art in the uh, ICU. So uh, we appreciate uh, the lecture from and this information uh, from our uh, uh, legend, uh, Professor Ansari. <coughs> and uh, now uh, uh, I think any questions will be at the end of the uh, lectures. <laughs>